Welcome back. In this quick video, I will show you how we can build this Pantene share in Fusion 360 using T-splines, which is perfect to create very organic shapes like this one. We will start first by creating few screenshots, which I take here from dimensions.com. And then in Fusion, we will set everything up. Now you see our, our individual views. And then in T-Splines, we use these views to create the mesh, turn this into a B-Rep surface, and then use that to give this a material thickness with the solid tools. Okay, let's do it. Let's start with the screenshots. I'm here on dimensions.com, which by the way is a very good website when you need side, front, top images of chairs, furniture, human figures, cars, etc. It's really good. The nice bonus is we have dimensions here. So based on if you're on Windows or on Mac OS, you have to use your specific program or shortcut and create the screenshots. Try only to screenshot what's necessary. And like in this view in the front, make them symmetrical. I have, for example, here my site front and top view. So these now we can bring into Fusion. We go right click, do not capture design history to turn off the timeline. And since the dimensions are in inches, we can click here and then set this to inches. Front view will be the easiest one to start. So insert and canvas, insert from my computer, front view, open, click on this yellow plane. That is, as you can see, the front plane, there we are. And we can scale this up a little bit and we might have to flip it. You see how then the text was inverted. Click OK. We have now brought in the image. What we have to do now is scale calibrate it actually. When we open here this canvases folder, there is the front canvas. Right click, select calibrate. Then we can zoom in and say from here to there, roughly this should be 19 inches. One thing um, I have to say, so when we <laughs> zoom in, you see this blue line gets as big as my screen. That means it's not very precise. So keep the dimensions and the images here with a grain of salt. We can use this as a reference, but this is not super precise. 19 inches, hit enter, very good. Now we can go ahead and say, edit canvas. And then we try to, by looking at the grid, nicely centering it, and then we move this one up so that the ground is on the x-axis. Cool. Okay, left side, one more canvas, same thing. From the computer, on this plane, scale this up a little bit. There, and then we can, oops, wrong one, flip it. Cool. Again, right click, calibrate. Maybe from there to there. That should be 20.75 inches. And then right click, edit canvas, and we bring this one up. Before we continue, let's actually rotate our view and I bring this over to there so that the top part of these two images overlap. And there we see that with this calibration, the side image is actually a tick bigger. So not very, very good. I'm going to scale this one down. That makes the top lower, but also the bottom higher. And so I have to bring this down a little bit more. And maybe one more time. Maybe in my case here, 0 0.99, a little bit down. Yeah, this looks actually pretty good. I can center this maybe there. Beautiful. Okay, last one. 
canvas top this time on this plane there we are scale this one up i do not have any um reference or line for dimensioning so i scale this one till the left and the right edges here start to overlap cool and then i need to make sure that uh yeah <laughs> this edge lines up with there so here's a little trick i bring this over to here we see that so this is this point okay so then i can go to this view right click edit canvas and bring this over till it's there so now this yeah should kind of like work again these images are really for mm, a visual reference last step now these images are right where i want to model that's not good you see here they are further away so i can go to the front image right click move and then simply move this one back okay and the side right click move and move this to there i think i needed to rotate my view a little bit to make this widget pop up and if we want this top we can also move down a little bit there again there there we are very good so now we have our scene actually set up to start modeling we will go to the form mode and that activates all the tools for fusion 360s t-spline tools and t-splines different term is subdivision surface modeling everything what we know from animation movies like pixar's toy story and literally everything that followed so we go to the front view and go to plane select this front plane we have center to the corner very good click to somewhere here and this is here the y-axis so the center so I click and i just drag a rectangle out what's important is that it kind of like matches the width the height uh, doesn't really matter as much click and then here one and one we enter and click ok so this is actually now a t-spline face what we can do is let's go to edit form we have various selection tools point kind of like a handle edge and the face let's select edge now i can select the edge and drag this one down and drag this down a little bit below actually the ground that's all good then i go to the top edge front and i'm kind of like drag this up okay now check this out i go to a side view and i click and select everything and drag this over to here okay very good rotate my view now shift and middle mouse button click on this edge and here's another trick hold the option or alt key so that is the key next to control and then when you click on this arrow and drag it extrudes a new piece out you can go to a side view now see now i'm moving this edge and then i hold the alter option key one more time and drag the point out to there so now we have a pretty pretty organic looking thing i can select this edge and then in the side view drag this to here this all doesn't look very good it's all good we will scalp this into the proportion we need but you see that this t-spline is actually a very nice tool to create a very organic shapes before we continue let me hit okay and if we go to display you see this is actually the internal geometry very linear and the software smooths it for us okay so i have one two three four edges i don't have enough 
points or edges to force this surface into the shape I see from the side. So what do we need to do? We need to add more geometry points. First, I select this edge, go to the side view and bring this one back. So you know, here I need one edge to push this forward. Here I need an edge to push this forward. So to insert an edge, it's very easy. We go to modify, insert edge here to the center. Okay. Here, I also need one. Where they pop up doesn't really matter. Okay. And then maybe here, insert edge. Cool. Okay. Very nice. Let's go to a side view. Here we see actually the funny thing we have now. Let's go to modify. Then we go to vertex. Now we see actually all these control points, including also the handles. I will go into the handles in a moment. What we do now, we simply drag right, sorry, left to right over one area where we have these points. And then I can move all this down. Click and drag, select this, click and drag. And there's, you know, how, how I am this way, adjusting everything. So the art now is moving these points till I get the flow I'm looking for. And I put this one roughly to here. So this is okay. And then this maybe a little bit back. And then we can move this a little bit to there. And there. This technology actually is also inspired by the tools um, shipbuilders use. Cool. Now, there you see now how we have something like this. Now from the side, that is maybe okay, but from the front there we can see, yeah, this is arced. And then here this domes down, plus this area goes back. So I need at the center a new set of lines. We can double click on an edge that selects the edge loop, modify, insert edge. We keep this at 0.5, that is actually 50%, so the center. So you see it goes from 0 to 1, 0.5, enter, very good. Modify, point select, just select a point, go to a side view, and then rip, we can drag this back. We can select this, drag this back. And here's a midpoint. Drag this one down. Here are two midpoints. Simply drag these down. Now you can see how everything nicely updates and it so quickly gets this really interesting organic look. Okay. Now we have actually these handles and you see all these handles are horizontal. Um, being horizontal means the surface goes the direction of the handles and then it starts bending or flowing down. So we select all everything, left to right click. And then here we turn on this, uh, let's see, can we make this a tick bigger? Yeah, link tangent handles. So now we can see how these handles actually follow the surface. And that's a little bit better. Cool. Okay. It's a little bit like clay sculpting, I find. And we can move these points here around a little bit more and just sculpt this as desired. Cool. Let's keep this at that. In the next step, let's go to the front view. We have this problem here. This is very pointy. And these edges are creased. Think about when you have paper and then you fold it and you crease it, you make a nice hard edge. And we can do the same also here with geometry. But we can also uncrease. So click uncrease, then 
click this point and this point or edge, and you see now this is nice and round. Edit, um, modify, then we select this point and this point, and we scale now both at the same time to each other. That's really important. You don't want to select one point and just move it and then select the other point and move it because it will be very likely that they are not symmetrical. Because this is a symmetrical object, it's easier, since we have to move them along one axis, to scale them along that axis and maybe move them down a tick. At this point we can move up a tick. And okay, here, they can go in a little bit too. Just a notch. Come on, thank you. And then maybe here these tick back out, maybe tick back down. Okay, yeah, very good. Let's keep it at this. This looks quite nice. Beautiful. You see, uh, we are slowly getting into the type of a form we we are really looking for. So this shell, uh, from an aesthetic point of view, we could say is maybe good. From a functional stand of point, well, no, functional stand of point, viewpoint, wah, wah, this is very unstable. We need to prevent if we sit down onto it for this piece to simply collapse. So we're going to strengthen the edges. And to, to do this, we will select all these edges. By the way, uh, mouse click, so double click. You see it selects now the complete loop. We do not need to select these two edges down here. Then we go to modify, uh, edges, very good. And now here comes the trick hold the option or alt key and we move this one back a little bit. There. Very good. And then what we have to do is a little bit now of correcting everything. So this point and this point, for example, can move forward and you see how this adjusts this surface. And then I do the same here and there and move this forward. Cool. Here, click and drag over these two points there and then um, bring this back. Very good. So there it is not where it should be. So this point and this point. goes to there, very good. Um, I think if, does it select both? Yeah, it selects through it, very good. This I will move down a little bit. So think about it like at an angle, this cut goes through it and then this I bring to there. You see, this is kind of like horizontal, this is rotated, this is rotated, this is rotated. So I'm trying to fix for example, the way how these elements look. So here, this has to go down. This has to go down to there, there, this has to go down to there. Here, these two points go tick back. And then, I'm really close to say that these two edges have to go forward. There we are. So you see, we can also simply select edges. Um, in this case here, we'll go back to these two points. Move this up. Now there, you start seeing this actually really becomes Nice, so here, this is the center point. This goes down, this point and this point can go up a little bit more. Oh, look at this. Um, here, these two 
way too far to the inside. And then here are the other two on the outside. There. Yeah. Maybe these two we move. There we are getting actually into a really good shape. Yeah, beautiful. Actually, not too bad. Let's go to the front view. How far are we still following it? Actually, that's pretty close. What about the top view? Um, yeah, here the center one, that's a maybe a little bit too far outside. But the rest is also there. Really good. There, you two go maybe a big bit back. <clears throat> And it tick this way. Yeah. Very nice. Cool. Uh, so I would say with this modeling, the, um, the design is nearly done. I just saw maybe this point here. I can drop down a little bit. Yeah. To make this work. Super. So you see this T-spline modeling is really an amazing technique and also medium when you want to create these very organic looking shapes. And we do all this without any sketches and skin, loft, revolve, whatever in between. We just take one kind of piece of digital clay and sculpt it into the shape we need. Now, canvases, we don't need any more. T-spline is good. What we're going to do now is this polygon based like T-spline geometry again. Huh? This <laughs> this is just what we have modeled, and so that's the low polygon control cage, and then T-splines creates this soft look inside. This now we need to turn into a NURBS surface or B-wrap utility. Convert. Uh, yeah, T-splines to B-wrap, and pay attention to bodies. Click OK, and there's now a new body. Now that is actually a NURB surface. If we want to be correct, we can reverse the orientation because yellow is actually inside and silver is outside. I mean, in this case, it doesn't really make much sense because this is just a surface. And now this we can turn into a thickness. The thicken command we have here under create for surface and solids, thicken. I will zoom into the bottom part and here look 0.25 of an inch or minus. Expanding it actually looks better. You see here this inner corner is much nicer. If I do this negative, it gets kind of very pinched. So we are growing the surface quarter of an inch away from this original surface. So it got a little bit bigger, not a big deal. You might remember that we also drew, created this one much um, longer below the ground plane. And look at this garbage here. We're not going to try to correct this. Like in, in a model shop, let's say there's a piece of plastic, we will put this on sandpaper and sand it nice and flush. Or in CAD, we will go to modify where is a split command. Here it's called split body. Okay, so this body split by this ground plane. Think about this like a bandsaw. Click OK. There's on the bottom part. We can delete this and there it's done perfectly trimmed so this is awesome let's say we would like to give this also a nice red color we can press a or um, where is the command here uh, i can't pronounce this word correctly and then we have for example plastic we can open plastic double click and then opaque double click and here's red, drag it onto it, double click. We can change the type of red, make this a nice orange, green, blue, 
whatever type of color we would like to have. This is actually kind of like a plastic glossy. So let me zoom in. Now that we can see, this is just a, a plastic material with a somewhat not super sharp, but a little bit blurry reflection on it. Very good. We created our Pantone chair with T splines in Fusion 360 using direct modeling. Congratulations.